Well, guys, Kamala and Biden are doing something based. Something that I think a lot of people on the left in America have been calling for for a long time, but more than ever since the stacked Republican Supreme Court voted to strike down Roe v. Wade, which is possibly one of the most, unpo most unpopular and anti-human rights decisions the Supreme Court has made in modern history. Maybe in the entire country's history, as far as I know. But this is a pretty big and good headline. This actually came out uh, the day before my birthday. I'm surprised I didn't know about this already, but it seems like it's getting a bit more attention now, and I, I kind of want to contribute to that. A new Supreme Court case threatens to gut the court's one good trans rights decision, but Kamala and Biden are currently working to reform the Supreme Court to make stuff like this less possible, including challenging this Supreme Court motion threatening trans rights. Kamala and Biden are fighting this, and they are even fighting to put in place reforms on the Supreme Court, and we're going to get into all that, but first let's start with the Supreme Court going after this trans rights decision uh, from back in the day. This is the bad news part, but then I'm going to kind of transition us into the good news part of this story. Republican Justice Neil Gorsuch, 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 I never know how to pronounce it, surprised most court watchers by supporting trans rights in Bostock v. Clayton County. We're about to find out if he actually meant it. Bostock v. Clayton County in 2020 was one of the few pleasant surprises for liberals to come out of the Supreme Court during the Trump administration. Authored by Trump appointee Neil Gorsuch and joined by Republican Chief Justice John Roberts, Bostock held that a decades-old federal civil federal civil rights law prohibits workplace discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity. It's also written using such expansive language that it leaves little doubt that discrimination against LGBTQ people is forbidden in many other contexts, including healthcare and education. So this is good. Like, this part of it was good. Um, it seemed like it was worded well. It seemed like there was actually, even among Trump appointees in the Supreme Court, support for at least believing that, like, trans people and people who have uh, different gender identities than that which is considered, uh, you know, usual, uh, should not be discriminated against, right? Like, trans people, non-binary people, etc. Uh, trans people, or non-binary people are trans people, but you know what I mean. In a very broad sense, we're not, like, specifying so much that it leaves out any groups um, of people that have differing gender identities. It seemed like it was pretty good, but now it's being challenged and we gotta see if he's gonna stand by it. Nevertheless, two separate appeals court, sorry, two separate appeals court panels, both of them dominated by Republican judges, recently suggested that Bostock has nothing to say about discrimination by educational institutions like public schools and universities. One opinion by the far-right United States Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit simply ignored Bostock altogether as though it didn't exist. Another opinion, joined by two Republicans on the Sixth Circuit, spent just two paragraphs trying to explain why the plain language of Bostock does not apply to schools. Now both of these cases, known as U.S. Department of Education v. Louisiana and Cardona v. Tennessee, are both the, are before the Supreme Court on its shadow docket, a mix of emergency motions and other matters that are often decided on a very tight time frame. The stakes are enormous, as these two cases could determine whether the justice is intended to enforce the one significant pro-LGBTQ rights decision they've handed down since former President Donald Trump started to re remake the Supreme Court in the Federalist Society's image. Mind you, the Supreme Court that, that we are currently sitting with is fucked, okay? Let's rewind time a little bit to the decision that they've been on to try and make Trump, like, immune to legal action that's considered, like, official acts as president. The reason why they're doing that is because, for those that don't know, in Georgia, Donald Trump hired people to act as fake electors. They've admitted to this. They, like, Donald Trump broke the law here. The people that he hired broke the law here, and they admitted to it. I I think they're even going to be speaking at, like, an upcoming Republican convention or something like that, or, like, a TPUSA event or, a, or, or some Heritage Foundation event or something like that. Trump actively tried to 
overturned the election in Georgia in, like, a downright ob obvious fucking way. He was so fucked, the only way to save him was to rule that any crimes he commits as president be considered a immune official action. So, this Supreme Court is on Trump's side. They are trying... Yeah, he was caught on wiretap. Like, this is not debatable. To be very clear, the whole fake electors thing, like, this is not debatable. They admitted to it. He was caught on wiretap. I think he's admitted to it. Like, I, it, there's no debate about this. Donald Trump's goose was cooked. Like, there was no way out. And so, he turned to the Supreme Court. And that's how we are where we are now with his immunity. Because there was just no denying that he illegally tried to overturn the results in Georgia. Most of the Biden administration's title... Oh, sorry, I, I think I... Both cases involve a fairly comprehensive set of Biden administration regulations interpreting title... Uh, I think nine. Yeah, Title IX, a law that prohibits sex discrimination at schools that receive federal funding. And both cases are exceedingly messy. Both of the Biden administration's Title IX regulations have nothing to do with transgender rights. Among other things, they lay out certain rights for pregnant students and school employees. They establish that parents and legal guardians may act on behalf of students whose Title IX rights have been violated. And the new regulations define terms such as complaint, disciplinary sanctions, or post-secondary education, which frequently arise in the Title IX disputes. That said, the regulations do include three provisions that impact trans students, including one that, according to the Justice Department, requires schools to allow these students to use bathrooms that align with their gender identity. The regulations also adopt Bostock's definition of sex discrimination, which includes discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity. So this this rule, Title IX regulation that Biden and Kamala put in place was... Um, it didn't name trans people specifically. Like, it never says transgender people or trans people at any point in there. But what it does say is you cannot discriminate on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity, which literally means you're not allowed to discriminate against trans people. That's what that means. They just didn't say the word that would immediately set off conservatives into freaking the fuck out. That said, the regulations do... Oh, sorry, my bad. The red state plaintiffs in Louisiana and Tennessee do not challenge any of the new rules that do not touch on transgender rights, and yet lower courts struck down the Title IX regulations in their entirety. That alone is an error warranting intervention by the Supreme Court. As the court held in Gill v. Whitford, 2018, when a court finds a legal violation, the, quote, remedy must be must of course be limited to the inadequacy that produced the in court injury, in fact that the plaintiff has established. But even setting aside the overbreadth of the lower court's orders, the lower court also co committed another egregious error. They struck down a trans rights provision of the new regulations that isn't just consistent with the court's decision in Bostock, it is compelled by Bostock. The lower courts faulted the Biden administration for doing the only thing it is allowed to do after Bostock was decided. Yeah, so to be very clear here, um, the Republicans even in the Supreme Court, even in the lower courts, are not very tapped in to the reality of the culture war. A lot of them only know that like, oh, I was appointed by Trump. Oh, this is the th culture war thing. Let me let me toe the line. Right. So a lot of them hear like discrimination on gender identity written directly in the ruling. And they don't recognize that means you're not allowed to discriminate against people who are trans because that is discriminating on the basis of someone's gender identity. There's there's no debate there. Like, they just didn't use the word trans that would send conservatives in the Supreme Court and in the lower courts frothing and into, a like, a feral rage, you know? Like... What are the new regulation... Sorry, what do the new regulations trans rights provisions actually do? The new regulations include three provisions touching on transgender rights in education, all of which are challenged by the plaintiffs in Louisiana and Tennessee. Title IX provides that no one 
shall face discrimination, quote, on the basis of sex in, quote, any education program or activity receiving federal financial assistance, unquote. The first challenge provision of the new regulations defines the phrase on the basis of sex to include discrimination on the basis of sex stereotypes, sex characteristics, pregnancy or related conditions, sexual orientation, and gender identity. That, that, that. That, that is just the word. They literally just replaced a word that would trigger conservatives with another word that means the same thing, a synonym, and uh, a broader synonym, frankly. And the right's now like, wait, we didn't know what gender identity <laughs> meant when we agreed to this. Is that what's happening here? Is that what's going on? The uh, conservative judges? Though the plaintiffs challenge the inclusion of gender identity in this definition, this challenge should be frivolous under Bostock. Bostock held that it is impossible to discriminate against a person for being homosexual or transgender without discriminating against that uh, individual based on sex. There's really no way to read that language other than the way that the Biden administration read it. Well, the fact is, though, that, you know, it's all up to the interpretation of the court, right? So... It doesn't matter if it says word for word something different. If the court interprets it a certain way, they can justify uh, going against this ruling and saying it, and they'll all the while say it doesn't say what it says, you know? The other two challenge provisions stand on somewhat less firm legal ground. One provision establishes, in the Justice Department's words, that a, quote, school discriminates on the basis of sex if it, if it requires a student to use a restroom or locker room that is consistent, inconsistent with the student's gender identity. As I'll explain in more detail below, Bostock does not guarantee a student's right to use a bathroom that aligns with their gender identity, but it literally does, though. It, it, it literally... It, it, liter it literally does. I mean, it doesn't guarantee it, but it, it, it says that it should. The remaining challenge provisions prohibit schools from engaging in unwelcome sex-based conduct that is so per severe or pervasive that it limits or denies a person's ability to participate in or benefit from a school's educational program. This provision is similar to many long-standing laws and legal precedents prohibiting sexual harassment, but the plaintiffs obje object to it on the theory that it might prohibit students and teachers from misgendering a student or from referring to them using the wrong pronouns. Ah... So they see it as they're trying to do a Bill C-16 here, right? Is the right trying to pull a Bill C-16? Does anyone remember that in Canada? Where they just, like, lied about um, what an anti-discrimination bill would do and fear-mongered about how it would make it so if you accidentally misgendered somebody in public that you've never met in your whole life, just saying, hi, sir, as you walk by someone and it turns out that they were, like, day one into their transition like and they they identify as a woman the cops would come and like slam your head into the concrete and like beat your ribcage in cuff you and then take you to prison for like 500 years is, is that what they're doing here like they're trying to fear monger about it just like bill c-16 Notably, however, the Justice Department does not ask the Supreme Court to weigh in on these later two provisions. That is, the Biden administration is willing to leave the low- well, Biden-Harris administration is willing to leave the lower court order blocking the bathrooms and anti-harassment provisions in place for now, while those issues are litigated in the courts below. It is likely, however, that they will ask the Supreme Court to weigh in on these two other provisions at a later date. For now, the Justice Department only asked the justices to block the two parts of the lower court's orders that are unambiguously wrong. The lower court's decision to strike down provisions of the new regulations that weren't even challenged, and the decision to strike down a definition of the term on the basis of sex that is identical to Bostock's definition. So it seems like they want to axe Bostock because Bostock uses wording and pre- or sorry, they want to axe Bostock because Title IX, the revised Title IX that was put, that was like updated by the Biden Harris administration, pulls from the precedent set by Bostock, and they want to challenge Bostock because if they can challenge Bostock, then that puts a hole into the new Title IX, and then if they put a hole in the new Title IX, they can justify, um, uh, uh like what's breaking the Title IX rule. Okay, okay, that makes sense. The Title IX discrimination rule relies on the Bostock decision, and that is why they are attacking the Bostock decision. That is what I'm getting here. To understand why the Justice Department decided only to challenge part of part of the lower court's orders, at least at this early stage in this litigation, it's helpful to dig into Bostock's reasoning. Bostock involved Title 
Uh, I believe that is seven, or is that six? I'm not good with Roman numerals, guys. Shit. It's the V with the two next to it. It's a V with two eyes. What is, hold on, now I'll just Google it. Seven, yeah, it's seven. Oh, wait, no, I was right. Wait, f fuck it, I'm not bad at Roman numerals. I need to believe in myself more, Jesus. Uh, Bostock involved Title VII, a federal law that prohibits workplace discrimination because of sex. Significantly, Bostock assumed that the term sex refers, quote, only to biological distinctions between male and female. So a child born with a penis is considered male for purposes of Bostock, regardless of their gender identity. Is that what it says? Yet even with this restriction in place, Bostock still reached its conclusion that it is impossible to discriminate against a person for being homosexual or transgender without discriminating against that individual based on sex. Wait, so why do we keep on going back and forth on this? The, the, the wording of the ruling is that it is impossible to discriminate against a person for being homosexual or transgender without discriminating against that individual based on sex. The Bostock ruling says you cannot discriminate against people based on sex. I... Like... I feel like this is a weirdly centrist framing by Vox, but even with their centrist framing, the reality of it is still peeking through, you know what I mean? Moreover, while Bostock itself involved an employment dispute, the case uses sweeping language that clearly encompasses other anti-discrimination laws such as Title IX. Again, Title IX forbids discrimination on the basis of sex, which, by the way, Bostock determined you could not make you could not discriminate on someone's uh, sex like or sexual orientation or being trans without discriminating on the basis of sex. And Bostock held that it is impossible to. Yep. But, okay, they go on to say exactly what I just said. And uh, Bost and. It, and Bostock held that it is impossible to discriminate against someone for being transgender, quote, without discriminating against this individual based on sex. Okay, so we're on the same page. It's just getting... This isn't being centrist. It's just being meandering with getting to the point. I don't know why Vox did that. Bostock does have some limits. For one thing, the court explicitly refused to address bathrooms, locker rooms, or anything else of the kind. It doesn't really matter because it's still, like, I think broadly included and you could challenge that in lower courts, which is probably how it's going to be done. Like, probably in states like Ohio, it'll get challenged and it'll fail. And in states like Georgia, it'll get challenged and maybe it succeeds. Like, the challenge succeeds um, using Bostock as a precedent. I think it's going to be, like, based on how conservative the area is and what ju local judges you're dealing with. And that's where it's going to come down to, honestly. Because Fox is not... Vox. V-O-X, not Fox. Dog, what do you mean? Fox? Did you guys think I would be reading from Fox? So the Justice Department's decision to ask the Supreme Court to reinstate most, but not all, of the stu struck down regulations is consistent with what the court said in Bostock. After Bostock, the question of whether schools may exclude transgender athletes from the bathroom that aligns with their gender identity is still an open an open question, and the Biden administration probably realized that it was unlikely to persuade this very conservative Supreme Court to extend Bostock, especially in a case asking the justices to intervene while litigation is still ongoing in the lower courts. But the question of whether the term on the basis of sex includes discrimination against transgender people is not difficult. The Supreme Court answered that question in the affirmative in, Bo in the affirmative in Bostock, and it did so clearly and directly. The lower court decisions refusing to apply Bostock to the Title IX to Title IX fail a very basic reading comprehension test. Okay, so Vox straight up gets to the point. They they just straight up say, you have failed reading comprehension if you do not recognize that Bostock acts as a precedent against trans discrimination that applies to Title IX, uh, and you should be ruling using such precedent as your basis. Okay, I'm glad they got to it. They're not playing the centrist here. There is no plausible way to read Bostock other than the way the Biden administ Biden Harris administration read it. The only question is whether two of the court's Republicans will reach that same conclusion. Ooh, that's rough. That's rough. That's hard. Here's the thing, though. As shitty... As shitty as the Supreme Court that we're dealing with right now is, we do have good news. We do have good news 
that could potentially change everything. Democrats may have a real chance to reform the Supreme Court. Biden's reversal signals a growing consensus in the party. The summer of reversals for President Joe Biden continued in dramatic form on Monday as he announced that he now supports sweeping Supreme Court reform. In an op-ed for the Washington Post, Biden pushed 18-year term limits and a binding ethics code on Supreme Court justices after a long career spent opposing such measures. I love how, like, now that there's not even, there's not even an election for him to win, and he's still getting more based by the day. He's still getting more based by the day. Any particularly particular reason he doesn't show his stream or his screen? I mean, I guess I could, I just, I could show it, but I feel like this is kind of boring visually. Like, may, I, I feel like my mug is unironically more entertaining to look at than this tiny ass text that, I, that on my screen for what you guys see is not legible. Like, I, I don't, I don't know like what, I, I don't know what you want. <laughs> I feel like it's uglier. My, like my stream looks uglier just having it on screen. I, I feel like it's better just to sit back and listen to it, you know? Don't worry, Zan. I like to read along. Okay, I mean, you know, there is a feature, I think, that I can turn on. Um, I think there's a feature I can turn on that adds a live YouTube, um, like, live YouTube subtitles. Like, it, it's a, I think it's done with, like, some AI program YouTube has set up, but, like, I'd be live streaming. YouTube hears what I says and generates captions live. I might want to enable that considering, you know, there might be hearing impaired people watching or might people might want to, like, mute for a bit, like, because someone's sleeping or whatever and they still want to watch the stream. That could be pretty handy. I might turn that on. Bro dropped out and decided to use more than 1% of his power. I mean, shit, if this is 2% of his power or whatever, then I can only imagine what 100% looks like. Over the last year, two years, we've been going hard covering Biden's accomplishments leading up to the election because we got to stop Trump. And I don't, I really don't want people to feel like they're eating a turd sandwich by voting for the Democrat nominee, right? Like, I want to focus on the positives because there are many more than one would expect. And that's a big part of why I've been so positive in my coverage of Biden and why I'm going to continue to be positive in my coverage of Kamala. Um, there, it's not just that you're eating the turd sandwich to stop the uh, the Nazi from getting into power. There's some, there's some positives, you know? There, there's some positives. There's some real high-quality bread being used for that turd sandwich, if I do say so myself. Uh... 100% in that speech when he, where he said, we own the finish line? Hell yeah. All right. Do, 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 do. Uh, do, 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 do. After a long career spent opposing such measures, as well as a constitutional amendment overturning the court's recent decision granting president president's immunity from criminal prosecution. As I mentioned before, by the way, the only reason that immunity from criminal prosecution thing happened was because of the fake electors thing, right? Here, um, Georgia fake electors. Need to be very clear here. Lawyers say three Republicans who falsely said Trump won Georgia were contingent electors, not fake. Three of the Georgia Republicans who signed a certificate falsely claiming that then-President Donald Trump actually won the state in 2020 were not fake electors. Their lawyers argued Wednesday, but instead were a contingent slate in contingent slate in case the original election results were tossed out by a court. U.S. District Judge Steve Jones heard arguments on why David Schaefer, Sean Still, and Kathy Latham believe the case against them should be tried in federal court rather than in the Fulton County, Fulton County Superior Court. They, along with Trump and 15 other people, have pleaded not guilty to charges accusing them of participating in, wide range, in a wide-ranging scheme to keep the Republican President Trump in power after Democrat Joe Biden won Georgia. Lawyers for Schaefer's Still and Latham argued their status as electors means they were acting as federal officials and were performing the duties required by federal law. They lied about who won, by the way. That's what they did here. They were fake electors who, loyal to Trump, lied about the results and tried to um, act as like fake whistleblowers to claim that in Georgia, the election was stolen. 
They were found out to have been doing this. There were wiretaps, there were communications they have admitted as such at this point. Um, now they're being held liable in court. They're, they have federal charges, I believe, even though they're being tried in, like, Fulton County. Um, regardless, these are federal charges. They're in seriously deep shit, I believe. Um, yeah. It's pretty fucking crazy. A uh, wide-ranging scheme in question. Trump and 18 allies were charged in Georgia election meddling as former president faces fourth criminal case. Donald Trump and 18 allies were indicted in Georgia on Monday over their efforts to overturn his 2020 election loss in the state, with prosecutors using a statute normally associated with mobs. This is the whole, like, um, uh, uh, uh re repo thing. Uh, where, like, they, uh, uh, a RICO thing, where they, they just full-on, uh, like, deep-dived Donald Trump's criminal background because they understood there to be a conspiracy afoot with so many people involved that they needed to, like, go crazy here. That was Trump's most serious case and the reason why he desperately went to his Supreme Court to rule him immune to criminal action. That is how scared he is. And that is why Kamala and Biden are now pushing to reform the Supreme Court uh, on Biden's way out. Oop, another troll. Where's the troll? I don't see any trolls in chat. Yeah, I honestly don't see any trolls. What do you mean? Did I ban them already? Anyway, is it too is it too little too late though? After all, Biden is now a lame duck president. Oh my god, dude. I forgot. I forgot that we have to we still have to deal with like Waves of Biden hatred. After all, Biden is now a lame duck president, and he faces a Republican-held House that won't go anywhere near these proposals. Even when Democrats had full control of Washington in, uh, in Biden's first two years as president, the party shied away from Supreme Court reform, thanks in, thanks in significant part to the ambivalence and tran transcendence of Biden himself. I, what does that word mean? In intransigence. Intransigence? Intransigence. Refusal to change one's views or to agree about something. God damn, dude. Oh my god. You know what's fucking crazy? Like, I'm not even trying to argue that Biden was given, like, a bad run by the media. Like, treated unfairly by the media. But every single time... We read any article that mentions Biden, like, even when he's doing something objectively good. Isn't it weird how they find a way to, like, shoehorn him being bad or not good enough in there? Like, it's it's so weird. Like, we're not even looking for it anymore. We're just looking at an article. It's about, like, Supreme Court reform that the Biden-Harris administration are doing. They love doing it. It's so weird. I think it's because nothing Biden-related gets clicks unless it's negative. Like, seriously, you have to be shit-talking Biden for anything about him to get attention. Because outside of that, those that support him and, like, they, they don't care about hearing what he's up to. Like, they don't care about politics all that much. They're just like, ah, oh, yeah, he's the normal guy. So it just feels like, um, like you kind of have to throw in, like, a little sprinkling of, of shitting on Biden, uh, in order to get the clicks on a headline, you know? In fact, as the Supreme Court was issuing the final opinions of yet another controversial term last month, I began surveying the board, co board community of Supreme Court reform advocates both in and outside of Congress and found real frustration with the White House's inaction. Quote, I'll just agree with you that this has not been a priority for them. Senator Sheldon White... Senator Sheldon, White House DRI, a, a leading Democrat proponent of Supreme Court reform, told me, quote, I think it would help a whole hell of a lot, Sarah tu Tuberville, the director of the Constitution Project at the nonprofit, pro nonprofit Project on Government Oversight, said of further presidential engagement. And then came the news that Biden would be endorsing proposals to overhaul the court amid his last gasp effort to hold on as the Democratic presidential nominee, followed a few days later by his decision to step aside. Now, despite outward appearances and a challenging political terrain, 
The path to Supreme Court reform is beginning to take shape. Based on interviews on and off the Hill, there is rough consensus and strategy that could actually lead Democrats to embrace Biden's stance and act on the court, if they can win in November. For starters, there is a clear political logic to Biden's three-part proposal. Term limits and ethics reform from the most support among Democrats. Wait, sorry. Term limits and ethics reform have the most support among Democrats and court reform advocates, and they are less politically controversial than adding seats to the court. That's true. Like, adding seats to the court is not something that's likely a good idea. Term limits are a far better one. Like, that's just objectively a better idea. Adding more seats just means more potential for more Republicans serving lifelong sentences. Uh, or sentences, uh, terms as uh, Supreme Court justices. That's that's uh, that basically makes our situation potentially worse in the future. Despite some lingering enthusiasm on the left for eight adding justices, almost no one I spoke with suggested that approach. Yeah, it's very dumb. As for Biden's proposed constitutional amendment on presidential immunity, that idea may not be going anywhere as a practical matter, but it highlights one of the court's most egregious decisions and also ties the court to Donald Trump, who of course appointed three of the six justices who bailed him out in that decision. That's the immunity decision. Ultimately, the electoral scenario that reform advocates need is a democratic trifecta in the fall, control of the White House and both houses of Congress. It's, quote, the only practical way to pass major legislation in the area, said Reg Representative Hank Johnson, Democrat from Georgia, who leads a group of Democratic House members focused on court reform. Republicans who have been racking up major policy victories at the court, he noted, don't want to change the current system. White House agreed, adding, we would need to find our way around a Republican filibuster. Currently, 60 votes are needed in the Senate to pass most pieces of legislation, and a handful of Democratic senators have so far been reluctant to follow up or to blow up those rules. Needless to say, obtaining such a Democratic trifecta in November will not be easy for the party, but despite the considerable electoral and political obstacles, there may now be more public and political momentum for Supreme Court reform than at any point in recent history. The court's public approval rating has hovered near an all-time low, roughly 40% for several years now, and there are signs that things have recently gotten even worse. The court's approval hit a record low, just 38% in a Fox News poll that was conducted after the court granted Trump partial criminal immunity in early July for allegedly trying to steal the 2020 presidential election. That represented a 20-point drop in approval in the same poll from an all-time high of 58% in March 2017, which just so happened to precede the confirmation of Trump's three appointees. So as you can see, there's a lot to this. For one, Biden and Kamala are pushing to reform the Supreme Court, but they're going to need Senate, uh, like 60 votes in the Senate, but the Republicans are going to filibuster, stall, and block it if they can't win in November and potentially see uh, a more favorable Senate. Um, I, I do believe, correct me if I'm wrong, there are Senate seats being voted on in this, uh, in this November, right? Like, people in, in many states are going to be voting on senators, right? Yeah, so it's not just the presidency that's important here, though it very, very much is because it's Biden and Harris's administration, and will be Harris's if she wins, administration pushing for the Supreme Court reform. We have to see a more heavily blue Senate. That is what's standing in our way right now. So we do have a path to Supreme Court reform, but it means that the Dems have to, we, we need like a very blue Senate in this election. State reps too, nice, nice, vote blue down ballot. You're right, about a third of the US Senate seats come up every general election, that's what I thought. So we're going to see an opportunity to replace a lot of red Senate seats with blue ones, but we need to protect our blue ones that we already have as well. So you need to vote blue down ballot. It's not just about voting for uh, Kamala Harris. You need to vote blue down ballot and you need to vote blue or, or you need to research the issues that are going to be on ballot because uh, there are going to be policies on the ballots. You need to research those policies and those issues, find out what the best position is to have on them and vote on them too. Because all that shit matters, not just who's going to be the next president and vice president. 
Yeah, no meme green party votes, okay? Don't don't pull a meme and vote green, okay? Um, the court's approval hit a record low, just 38% in a Fox News poll that was conducted after the court granted Trump partial criminal immunity in early July for allegedly trying to steal the 2020 presidential election. That represented a 20-point drop in approval in the same poll from an all-time high of 58% in March 2017, which just so happened to precede the confirmation of Trump's three appointees. More than 75% of respondents in the Fox poll, including a large majority of Republicans, also said that they support it, that they support 18-year term limits for the justices, even assuming that GOP support soft that is insane. 75% of respondents in a Fox poll answered that they support an 18-year term limit for the Supreme Court justices. 3 quarters three quarters of fox news watching fox poll answering people want 18 year term limits on the justices that's crazy it's not hard to locate the source of americans widespread frustration the court of course has been racked by a series of serious ethical controversies associated with the republican appointees clarence thomas and samuel alito but as notable and widely covered as those episodes have been, the much bigger problem for the court's public and political standing has been its ju uh, jurisprudence, in particular, the cascade of politically charged opinions that have been issued by the Republican six appointees in recent years that very neatly align with the political priorities and imperatives of the Republican Party. In the last few years, the six Republican-appointed justices on the court overturned the right to, an abor right to an abortion, made it harder to pass gun control legislation. For those that don't know, um, the right to abortion thing is um, the Roe v. Wade stuff. Uh, they're also attacking IVF, I believe? Uh, the made it harder to pass gun control legislation. What is that? Supreme Court strikes down New York gun law along ideological lines. Huh. I think if I recall correctly, that was a rare W. I like guns. <laughs> Same ad. Invalidated affirmative action. That's cringe, I guess. I mean, affirmative action is a very demonized thing and a very demonized practice, but I think while it does have its flaws, the war being waged on it is pretty evil and racistly motivated because, like, affirmative action systems as they exist today that are flawed and can be proven flawed should be reformed but trying to ban it and demonizing it is it's very like transparent what they're doing there you know all right in the last few years the six republican appointed justices on the court overturned the right to oh yeah we already read that bit um passed gun control legislation and validated affirmative action and threw out a major component of Biden's student loan forgiveness program, one of his signature domestic policy initiatives. Yeah, for those who don't know, Biden axing waves of uh, student loan forgiveness, like doing the student loan forgiveness in waves, is because he has to do it in small chunks because the Supreme Court keeps blocking him. If it weren't for the right wings, like the right-leaning Supreme Court, Biden would have killed all student loan debt. He's already axed billions, I think, in student loan debt at this point. Like, maybe close to 10 billion? I don't even know what the total is, but it it's over billions. Based War Penguin. I actually got a letter recently for giving some of my student loans. b b, -b based Um... This year alone, the justices overturned a ban on so-called bump stocks on semi-automatic rifles. They made it even easier to engage in partisan and racial gerrymandering. That's cringe. They significantly undercut the federal government's ability to enforce federal laws and regulations through its agencies and overturned a decades-old judicial doctrine that required courts to defer to agencies when interpreting ambiguous federal laws. And of course, they handled tr handed Trump a major political and legal gift in the form of their immunity ruling. So at the end of the day, this news is pretty huge. The Supreme Court that we're currently dealing with cannot stand. Like, we cannot deal with this Supreme Court until everybody on it either sets, steps down voluntarily or dies of old age, right? Like, th this cannot stand. <laughs> We are currently sitting on, like, a teetering edge of, like, any day now finding out through some leak that they're going to go after, like, gay marriage next or something, right? Like, 
we gotta do something about this. And the only way to achieve this Supreme Court reform is to ensure Kamala Harris wins in November. We continue to have a Demo Democratic administration. Has that not already been leaked? It has, but we're, like they're they're waiting on it. Like they they already planned to, but it, it could happen any day now. They haven't motioned for it yet. And that's what I'm talking about potentially leaking, because it's already leaked that they have it on their docket. Regardless, though, um, these guys got to go. Uh, they do not deserve to serve lifelong terms in that position when they plan to destroy so many marginalized groups' rights in this country. We, we got to do something about it. And that something is voting blue for your uh, local Senate seats, voting blue for the presidency, voting blue down ballot on uh, local policy, voting blue on your representatives go hard a site that uh people in chat are telling me to promote by the way is the progressive voter guide uh, apparently this is what it looks like and slashy linked it in chat i'll go ahead and link it as well in um uh uh oh wow yeah that's a lot that's a lot of institutions that back them up pretty dope site's not loading some images but that's fine pretty cool um, I'll drop a link to this in YouTube chat so you guys can go check it out as well and see what, like, local local stuff you want to vote on, you know? Nice, nice. Well, hey, if you enjoyed this coverage of uh, Kamala and Biden's plans for Supreme Court reform and how big of a deal it's going to be, then please consider dropping a like, subscribing and ringing the bell icon to turn on all notifications, and commenting down below. Every time you do those things, YouTube pushes my content out in the algorithm to far more people. And if you guys haven't noticed, the channel has been blowing up lately. So it's very clear to me you guys have actually been doing this, so please keep it up. And if you haven't been, consider doing it as well. It's totally free and really does go a long way to support me think of it like thanking the bus driver you know dropping that thumbs up even on these streams live right now it's like thanking your bus driver you, you, you can't you can't not thank the bus driver dog like what do you mean anyway you can also follow my social medias link down below in the description join my fan discord where i host events and announce all my new uploads and streams and if you want to support me directly financially you can afford it and you feel like doing it consider donating subscribing or gifting a sub on my website xanderhall.com forward slash live or supporting me through youtube twitch streamlabs stream elements or patreon or buying merch of the streamlabs link down below but regardless of how you support me thank you so much for watching and have a good one bye bye Thank you.